Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Teal. I'm president of Doctors Research, and today I'd like to talk to you about natural versus synthetic vitamins. Before I get started, I might as well try to explain a little bit of my qualifications. I have a PhD in Nutrition Science from Union Institute and University, and I also have a Master's of Science from the University of Southern California. I'd say, okay, well, a lot of people have degrees. What makes me uniquely qualified in order to put this on is that actually I'm the first scientist since World War II to get a paper published in a major medical journal explaining why all the vitamins are better if they're natural. I had this paper published about a decade ago, and something interesting, if you notice the title, it says natural uh, vitamins may be superior to synthetic ones. When the reviewers reviewed my article, there's only one change they made, and that was the title. Originally the title was natural vitamins are superior to synthetic ones, but the reviewers were concerned that if the statement was so bold, this may turn certain doctors off from reading it. Now the fact that you're watching this particular uh, video suggests obviously you have interest in natural vitamins, which is what I'm going to talk about. Most people who go to health food stores, to, to grocery stores, pharmacies, or whatever, and they buy vitamins, think that they're buying natural vitamins. So when they come into your clinic, they're already convinced that they're already on a multiple vitamin much of the time. But what they don't realize, no matter where they got it, the probability of it being synthetic is very high. In this particular brochure that many of you doctors already have, you notice that we say that 98.97% of vitamins consumed in, are, are synthetic. Well, actually, it's probably even higher than that, but this is an easy, easier number to, to, uh, to demonstrate. Now, what difference does it make? Well, in this multi-part series, we're going to talk about antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals, and explain again why they're better for your patients, why if people are interested in natural health, they ought to take natural vitamins made out of food as opposed to synthetic vitamins and the other vitamin analogs that are sold in the market. I mentioned antioxidants, and this part's kind of interesting. You can go to the store and you can buy these antioxidant formulas, or your patients do. And what they get is they'll get a, they'll get a product that contains uh, isolated beta carotene, ascorbic acid, uh, some type of vitamin E probably, and perhaps uh, some, some zinc and some other nutrients. The problem is, while those substances have antioxidant effects in vitro and test tubes, that doesn't mean that they actually work in human beings. You say, what? Correct. According to uh, research on most of these substances, while they do work in test tubes, they do not have measurable or significant antioxidant effects in human beings. This is why when you hear studies like antioxidants fail to help cancer or antioxidants fail to help Alzheimer's patients, you need to be cautious about that because almost all the time these major studies are using isolated USP, that stands for United States Pharmacopoeia, vitamins which basically are synthetic vitamins or synthesized analogs of vitamins or they're so far extracted from where the, wherever they start off with, they're really not food vitamins. Beta carotene, specifically, uh, when it's synthetic, actually has been found to affect the ability of vitamin E to work in the body. So well, that's really good. So people take beta, synthetic beta carotene, they think they're getting an antioxidant, instead it's messing around with the vitamin E that, that they're taking or that's in their body. What about vitamin C? Now people think, oh, I can just go and take a lot of synthetic vitamin C because it's fine. Or my vitamin C is not synthetic because it says natural on the label. First, I need to comment or caution everyone. Just because something says it's natural doesn't mean it is by naturopathic uh, definitions. Basically, what is typically called natural ascorbic acid or vitamin C in most supplements starts off as corn, becomes corn sugar, is processed with acetone, becomes isolated, and becomes crystalline in structure. In foods, vitamin C is not crystalline in structure. It actually exists in two different forms, uh, ascorbate and dehydroascorbate. In foods like, for example, uh, our C complex for, that food research puts out that we distribute at Doctors Research. This contains foods and food factors, such as oranges, that actually contain vitamin C that's in food, which again is not isolated ascorbic acid. In our products and in foods, vitamins are not crystalline in structure. Now I mentioned this particular brochure before, and for you doctors who have it, 
You'll notice by taking a look at the photographs here that the uh, synthetic vitamins are crystalline, whereas food vitamins are much more rounded. They don't look the same. Not only don't they look the same, they don't function the same. According to several mainstream studies, the reality is that although ascorbic acid has significant in vitro, again, in test tube effects in terms of antioxidant abilities, it does not have this effect, at least not significantly, in the human body or in vivo. Furthermore, when people are taking antioxidants, they're hoping to neutralize free radicals. That's one step. But the other step is you'd like to damage the free radicals removed remove from the body. Well, according to the Merck Index, this is not the Merck Manual on Diagnostics, but this is the Merck Index on Biologicals, what this says is that ascorbic acid has positive ORP, or positive oxidative reductive potential, which means it does not attract and remove free radicals. Yet, a study that we did uh, years ago on uh, the vitamin C, or the foods that are in uh, C complex, we found that food vitamin C had negative ORP. In other words, it has the potential to extract some of the damage out of the body to help you de detoxify. What about vitamin E? It's interesting. When I wrote the paper on natural versus synthetic vitamins, I quoted a book, which I have here, called Modern Nutrition, Health, and Disease. And back then, the prior edition of that book said that vitamin E was the exception to the paradigm that natural vitamins are no better than synthetic ones, because the author of that particular uh, chapter said, oh, vitamin E it makes a difference if it's uh, from a natural source or non-natural source. And that's true. In addition, the natural types are retained better in the body, but we'll take this a step further. One of the more costly so-called natural vitamin E isolates that's in a lot of uh, vitamin supplements is vitamin E succinate. Yet, let me read something from the physician's desk reference on nutritional supplements related to that. Quote, d alpha 2 succinate itself has no antioxidant activity. What? So people are taking antioxidants that they're buying various places, or people have told them to get, for antioxidant abilities, and they don't have antioxidant abilities, at least not significant ones. But food vitamins do. Food nutrients do. Vitamins in foods are the way God intended people to consume them. They're what works better, and those are the only ones that have true antioxidant abilities, at least the most significant ones. So if your patients come into your office and ask you about antioxidants, tell them uh, if they're taking these synthetic supplements, what they need to be doing instead is to, take, is to be eating more fruits and vegetables, and if they wish to supplement, to take vitamins that are made out of food and antioxidants that are made out of food as opposed to isolates. The other thing you can do, you can refer your patients to uh, www.doctorsresearch.com, which is our website. There's a paper there on antioxidants. It has a lot more technical information than that which I've been able to go over in this, this particular segment. So again, uh, natural vitamins, food vitamins are superior. This is where you get the true type of antioxidants that your patients are hoping to get and that you want for your patients. And that's what everybody should take.